Hey, how's it going guys? It's Nate here. And Stormcloaks or the Empire? To banish or spare Parthernax? Join or destroy the Dark Brotherhood? No matter, Skyrim is a game that offers players the chance to make quite a lot of choices and big decisions that oftentimes come with significant in-game consequences. The amount of influence you get to exert on many of the game's quests and stories is dramatic. But, are you truly aware of just how much of a say you have in the world of The Elder Scrolls V? You see, many of Skyrim's quests have alternative methods of completion, or hidden side objectives that simply aren't disclosed to the player that can result in notable changes to the world around you. And I'm not just talking about the obvious judgments we're told we get to make, like to side with Barbas or Clavicus Vile in a Daedra's best friend, or help Savan or Feyendel win Camilla Valerius' heart. But instead, I want to explore the options we get that Bethesda doesn't really tell us about through dialogue or objective markers. So today, we'll be taking a look at five secret choices you didn't know you had in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Starting off, you can spare Hrogar in Laid to Rest. For those of you who don't know, Laid to Rest is a side quest the player can pick up in Morthal after speaking with the city's Jarl. She'll inform the Dragonborn that before you arrived, a home in the town was burned to the ground, and in the fire, both a woman and child were unfortunately killed. That said, strangely, the family's husband and father, a man named Hrogar, survived. While already a tragic event, many have begun to grow suspicious of Hrogar, as after the incident, he almost immediately moved in with another woman named Alva whom some had suspected he was having an affair with prior to the blaze. The fear of foul play is a great one. Jarl Egrid will task you with investigating this matter, and proving whether or not Hrogar and Alva had anything to do with the death of his family, or if they're just two individuals who came together at a bit of an inappropriate time. Now, skipping over some of the details, you'll eventually learn that Alva, again, Hrogar's current lover that many people are suspicious of, may in fact be a vampire, and will be tasked with breaking into her home and recovering her journal to prove it. Now, when you do this and first enter her house, Hrogar will already be in there, waiting for you, and immediately will turn hostile, saying, I won't let you hurt Alva, effectively forcing you to kill him. Typically, Alva will be there too, and you'll also have to murder her to death as well. Once that's been taken care of, you'll be able to locate Alva's diary, which will confirm that she is, or was, in fact a vampire. But Hrogar wasn't. Apparently, as a vampire, Alva was using some sort of shady mind control magic to effectively turn Hrogar into a slave. And once he fell under her spell, she had him do away with his family, so that he could dedicate more of his time to serving Alva. The journal also discloses that Alva was working for another, more superior, master vampire named Movarth in his lair nearby the city whom you'll have to go kill and complete the quest. But it becomes apparent that Hrogar was really just a terrible and, frankly, unwilling victim in this matter. He would never have hurt those he cared about had he not been placed under Alva's spell. Well, if when you first break into the home and are attacked by Hrogar, rather than fight back, you instead choose to use a calming spell, or the Voice of the Emperor ability, which will cause him to sheathe his weapon and turn passive, and then proceed to steal the journal and go clear the vampire lair to complete the quest, when you return to Morthal, Hrogar will still be alive and well, now free from Alva's influence, and will have some unique dialogue thanking the player for their actions. Take a listen. Thank you for saving me from Alva. I was completely under her evil spell. I'll never forgive myself for what happened to Helgi and my wife. Next on our list, the quest, Missing in Action, will be given to the Dragonborn by Whiterun's elderly jewelry vendor, Fralia Greymane, who sends the player to the Thalmor Fortress and Prison, North Watch Keep, to rescue her son Thorald, whom she believes has secretly been being held there since his mysterious disappearance ages ago. Much like Laid to Rest, Missing in Action can be quite the long quest. But the spark notes of it are that you find proof that Thorold is actually being held at the prison in the form of a letter held by a senior Battleborn official, head to Northwatch yourself, open up a can of whoop-ass on the Thalmor, rescue Thorold, and bring him home safely. Though what the game doesn't tell you is that there's an entirely non-violent approach to this quest that the player can take, which will result in the Thalmor peacefully handing over Thorold and no blood needing to be shed. If the player has joined with the Imperial Legion, after receiving this quest, you can go straight to General Tullius in Castle Dower, and inform him that you need a prisoner released from Thalmor custody at Northwatch. While he will be extremely disgruntled, he will provide you with an order directed to Northwatch's guards to release Thorold immediately. The Thalmor. 
Do you have any idea what you're asking? I can only imagine the headaches this is going to cause. Here, take this. Assuming they even honor it, you should be able to get your prisoner out. Head over to the fortress, simply show the order to the first Thalmor guard you see. What? Well, this seems to be in order. Very well, follow me. And then they'll peacefully and respectfully take you to Thorold, unchain him, and let the two of you go on your way. Completing the quest, all without a drop of blood being spilled. Coming at number 3, the Dragonborn has the ability to actually get kicked out of Skyrim's most prominent factions. You see, should the player ever get caught attacking or stealing from a member of either the Dark Brotherhood, Thieves' Guild, or College of Winterhold, while you're an active member of one of those guilds, you'll be expelled from them and unable to continue with any of their quests. So, say you're in the Dark Brotherhood, and Astrid catches you trying to pickpocket her. You'll literally be kicked out of the faction. This will unlock some unique, rather angry dialogue delivered on behalf of the people in the guild you've been kicked out of. Idiot. I may not have a lot of rules, but that doesn't give you free reign to do as you please. You want to resume your duties? Go talk to Nazir. Ah, don't worry. We all like to break the rules sometimes. Just see Nazir and pay the fine. Seems I do that at least once a month. Now, fear not, because the consequences aren't permanent, as immediately after you've been given the boot from whichever faction, a new quest will automatically be added to your journal, that simply directs you to meet with a member from that faction, and pay them a large sum of gold to rejoin. This will allow you to resume their quest line and return all faction members to a positive disposition with the player. You disrespected the Brotherhood, and it'll cost you. You want back into the family? You pay the price. 500 gold, and all is forgiven. Good. I'll spread the word that you've made reparations. Now let's forget the past and get back to business. Now, again, keep in mind, only the Thieves' Guild, Dark Brotherhood, and College of Winterhold are capable of expelling the player from their faction. So you don't need to worry about General Tullius discharging you for accidentally hitting an Imperial soldier or something. Just make sure you're aware of this next time you're thinking about stealing that cool amulet a professor at the college is wearing. They'll make you pay for it. For Fort Spot, the quest, The Forsworn Conspiracy, is among the most complex side missions you'll receive in the game. It begins shortly after you enter the city of Markarth. Where, upon your first visit, you'll witness a man named Waylon attack and kill a young woman named Margaret, shouting, The Reach belongs to the Force Worn. Now, fun fact, you can actually save Margaret, but that's not the point. After this attack is concluded and neither you or the guards have killed Waylon, a Breton gentleman named Eltris will approach you and hand the player a note, requesting you secretly meet with him at the local shrine to Talos. Once you arrive, Eltris will fill you in on the city's current tumultuous political situation, thanks to a secretive bandit-like organization called the Forsworn, who have been terrorizing the Reach since the Great War, carrying out a number of assassinations, including on Eltris's father. The Breton man now seeks answers, and will request that you investigate Margaret's recent attack and promise to reward you handsomely should you find anything. He'll be waiting at the shrine for you to return. Well, your investigation of this affair will send you down quite the rabbit hole, as you discover in Margaret's journals that she's an Imperial spy, or was an Imperial spy, and they'll lead you to a rich man named Thonar Silverblood, who leads you to a dude named Nepos. It's a whole shabam. But once you're finished tracking down leads, you'll be given a quest objective to head back to the shrine of Talos and tell Eltris what you've learned. Problem is, when you get there, you'll find but his dead corpse, next to three corrupt guards who will announce that you know too much and their intentions to arrest and frame you for the Forsworn's actions. This will be the end of the quest, and once you've been arrested, a new mission called No One Escapes Sidna Mine will begin. Though, that's for another video. What you may not know is that you can periodically come back to Eltris as you're collecting leads and evidence for a small reward each time. Every time you steal a new journal or learn something significant, you can return to the Shrine of Talos, where Eltris will give you a leveled amount of coin, provide you with some new additional information and context to help you make sense of everything, and thank you for helping him get closer to solving his father's death. So the clues point to the Treasury House, then. That makes sense. Thonar is involved in every facet of the city. Here's the gold I promised. Keep following the trail, and there will be more in it for you. Nepos the Nose? He's been in Markarth forever, and he's well respected among the natives of the Reach. Good work. Here's your gold. I have a feeling Nepos gets his own orders, though. If you find out, 
I'll have more for you. Bethesda, of course, doesn't really tell you you can do this. There are no quest markers telling you to report back to the Breton or anything of the sort. You can continue feeding him information right until you gather your final lead and are sent to return to the shrine, where he'll of course be dead and yourself will be arrested. But you can at least ensure he dies knowing who the Forsworn really are, and make yourself a bit richer in the process. Now, before we get to our final spot, we do have one honorable mention that I'd like to share. It's really cool, but we've covered it before, so it's an honorable mention. Did you know that you can actually flee from the Battle of Whiterun during Skyrim Civil War? Whether you're supposed to be fighting for the Imperials or Stormcloaks, if you simply fast travel away from the city during the fighting, rather than, well, fight, the quest will automatically be completed, and your next objective will be to report to General Tullius or Ulfric Stormcloak, depending on which side you are representing. Either leader will harshly scold you for your cowardice, but you'll learn that whichever side you were fighting on did still ultimately win anyway, and the questline will continue as normal from there. Take a listen. Perhaps the Stormcloaks will soon lose heart for this little rebellion of theirs once and for all. However, I'm disappointed to hear that you fled from the field of battle. We do not reward cowardice in the Legion. I expect better of you. And finally, last on our list, when you approach Markarth's Hall of the Dead for the first time, you'll find the main entrance locked, and the local priest of Arche, Brother Verolus, will be standing in front of it. He'll tell you that he can't let you in, as someone's recently been desecrating the bodies. However, if you're a little persuasive, you can convince him to let you in, and inspect the situation for yourself. This will begin the Daedric quest, The Taste of Death. As you enter the catacombs, you'll hear a strange voice call out to you, before a woman named Iola emerges from the shadows. She'll confess that she is in fact a cannibal, and try and convince you that you're one too. She'll then ask that you meet her at Reachcliff Cave to get it ready for a feast she and some friends are preparing. Once at the cavern, you and her will clear out some of Reachcliff's Draugr, and Iola will then tell you to go get the Priest of Arche and bring him back to the cave. Once you do, the quest will climax, as it becomes obvious that Iola and her cannibal friends desire to eat the poor guy, and you're ultimately forced to choose to let this innocent priest become dinner, or stand up to these twisted cannibals and take them all down. It's a very tough decision. On one hand, you let an innocent man lose his life, on the other, the cannibals do give you some cool things. But there is indeed a way to avoid all of this nonsense, and effectively end the quest just as it begins. When you initially meet Iola after she reveals herself in Markarth's Hall of the Dead for the first time, she won't be registered as essential. Meaning, as soon as she appears, you can simply kill her before she starts talking. This will instantly fail the quest, and spare you from needing to make that tough choice later on. Furthermore, you'll be able to catch up with Brother Verolus, and a new dialogue option will become available, allowing you to explain that there was a cannibal inside of his tomb that you took care of. He'll just give you a small reward and ask that you spare him the details. I don't need to know the details. Blessings of RK to you for your help. Here, take my amulet as a reward. If you try and tell him there's a cannibal inside the Hole of the Dead, with the Taste of Death still active and Aeola alive, the game simply won't let you, and you can't let him know. One major benefit going this route has is that if you choose to side with Brother Verolus later on in the quest right as the cannibals are preparing their feast, you'll have to kill all of the cannibals, which unfortunately include many of Markarth's most prominent merchants, which won't be replaced after they die. So doing this will allow Brother Verolus to keep his life, and you won't lose any merchants in the city. It's a win-win. That said, the quest does boast a really cool Daedric ring if you decide to side with the cannibals. So, you do have to weigh your options. But with that, we are going to wrap up. Five secret decisions you didn't know you had in The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Which of the ones featured on this list did you find to be the coolest or most fascinating? What alternative approaches to quests and missions that affect the outcome do you know of that I didn't cover in this video? Leave a comment down below. I would definitely love to do a sequel. As always, like ratings are very much appreciated. Thanks for stopping by everyone, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Peace out everybody.